day. I'm Elsa Mintz, Director of the Research Unit, Self-Directed Learning <clears throat> in the Faculty of Education at Northwest University. And I'm joined by my co-authors, editors, Dr. Dorothy Loebscher and Professor Jaku Willeke. This open educational resource video acts as supplementary material to the IOSIS publication, Self-Directed Learning, an imperative for education in a complex society. Each chapter in this book represents independent research in the field of self-directed learning. The chapters form a coherent contribution concerning the scholarship of self-directed learning and specifically the effect of environmental and praxis contexts on the enhancement of self-directed learning in a complex society. The publication as a whole provides diverse perspectives on the importance of self-directed learning in different contexts. Scholars working in a wide range of fields are drawn together in this scholarly work to present a comprehensive dialogue regarding self-directed learning and how this concept functions in a complex and dynamic higher education context. This book presents a combination of theory and practice which reflects selected conceptual dimensions of self-directed learning in society, as well as research-based findings pertaining to current topical issues related to implementing self-directed learning in the modern world. The VIRA method methodologies provided the reader with different and balanced perspectives, as well as different and innovative ideas on how to conduct research in the field of self-directed learning. This publication is the sixth installment in the NWU Self-Directed Learning series. This series explores self-directed learning as an educational approach in which the students assume responsibility for their learning. This collection intended primarily for researchers, documents, the evolution of scholarship and the latest findings resulting from collaborative research, which is distinct with a distinct focus on self-directed learning. My co-editors will now provide an, an overview of the chapters. I am Jakub Willeke from the research unit Self-Directed Learning in the Faculty of Education at the Northwest University. I also lead the UNESCO Chair on Multimodal Learning and Open Educational Resources. The chapters in this publication can be grouped thematically along two lines, the environmental context and praxis of self-directed learning. Firstly, it was important to situate self-directed learning within an African context. It is evident that the African philosophy of Ubuntu can be beneficial for promoting self-directed learning, not only for Africa, but also globally. Ubuntu pedagogy can promote self-directed learning by supporting educators to foster habits of mind, to learn and work cooperatively with diverse others. Furthermore, the African philosophy of Ubuntu is beneficial for promoting self-directed learning, as students come from diverse backgrounds with the riches of life experiences and a rich knowledge base that can promote self-directed learning. Self-directed learning needs to be seen as a social or communal action focusing on achieving collectively developed learning goals through support and cooperation. In the second chapter, a further issue regarding self-directed learning and context relates to the role of the learning environment. Higher education institutions that are truly dedicated and committed to providing active instruction need to enhance and promote self-directed learning in their learning environments. Self-directed learning can be promoted in learning environments by embracing a self-directed learning culture, addressing students' needs, making students and educators feel secure, fostering a sense of belonging, employing active teaching and learning strategies and activities, supporting educator skills and roles, focusing on collaboration, providing opportunities for engagement and connectedness, and finally, providing continuous support. It is proposed that innovative, dependable learning environments with a social constructivist inspired understanding of learning be created in higher education institutions, where the relationship between educators and students need to be bi-directional in order for students to have the freedom to take ownership of the learning process. The online environment 
also has specific implications for self-directed learning. In this regard, online study advice regarding the shift from face-to-face -to, -face to multimodal learning was investigated in terms of the requirements related to self-directed as well as multimodal learning. This publicly posted advice come within a broader worldwide shift to a multimodal mode of delivery because of restrictions in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the context of this research, multimodal learning involved learning online, but it also include different modes of communication. This chapter determined that despite little overt reference to either self-directed learning or multimodal learning, many principles and aspects acting in support of self-directed multimodal learning were identified in the online study advice. As sources like the online advice sources analyzed in this chapter are published online and may have great impact, it is recommended from this research that academics working within the field and related fields engage further with this type of a communication in order to inform more comprehensive educational practices in terms of completed and ongoing research. Another technology-based environment is that of microworlds. One of the chapters focused on construction of microworlds as supportive environments for self-directed multimodal learning. These microworlds are specifically designed learning environments that allow learners to explore ideas in a safe manner within a multimodal environment that may simulate real-life situations. It was found that microworlds can be potentially well adapted for self-directed learning although not without caveats. The importance of learner agency in constructionism is brought into practice via the features of microworlds and, as such, resonates with the principal ideas of self-directed learning. The presence of online platforms and fora allow for diverse expressions of learners' self-directedness and opens new avenues for collaboration with peers and mentors. The inherent multimodalities in microworlds are indicative of the versatility in the manner in which they can be used by different learners. A fairly recent trend, as was shown in Chapter 5, uh, within e-learning is adaptive learning. In this context, another uh, tangible pedagogical approach is uh, uh, addressed in terms of identifying adaptive prompts for facilitating metacognitive regulation in online learning environments which can easily be inserted into online learning systems. To do so, the prompt should be prepared and therefore prototyped in terms of the opportunities and experiences they provide to plan, monitor and evaluate the learning experiences. While adaptive learning is a promising field for education, stakeholders need to be familiar with how technology facilitates important metacognitive regulation behavior, such as planning, monitoring and evaluation. This chapter offers a literature review on technology-based adaptive learning with an emphasis on the use of adaptive prompts to promote self-directed learning. This review revealed various categories of metacognitive prompts for the domains of metacognitive regulation, including prompts to aid in planning, monitoring and evaluation on either novice transition and expert level. My co-editor, Dr. Dorothy Lopesher, will cover the rest of the book as it relates to the praxis of self-directed learning. Thank you, Professor Olivier. I am Dr. Dorothy Loebscher, also from the research unit Self-Directed Learning in the Faculty of Education at the Northwest University. Self-assessment is an essential skill for the development of self-directed learners. However, it is seldom an explicit learning objective in most university level courses and programs. One chapter describes how knowledge surveys support the development of self-assessment skills in courses and programs. Using these analytical approaches, the authors observed consistent patterns of self-assessment, suggesting that meaningful differences in self-assessment exist within different socioeconomic groups. They also described how teachers proficient in using knowledge surveys employ them to promote the active learning of content and to mentor students towards self-regulation, high-order thinking, and self-directed learning. Importantly, it's evident that we can no longer ignore the vital role of self-assessment in innumerable decisions that students confront about learning, problem-solving, educational plans, and career paths. The knowledge presented obligates educators to equip all students with the self-assessment skills needed for lifelong learning, careers, and successful engagement, with a rapidly changing world. Another chapter reports on research 
on an in-service professional development program for 10 natural sciences teachers. A central theme of this research was that teachers should take ownership of their learning as intended by the professional development program as self-directed learners. Based on teachers' needs, a professional development program was developed to assist teachers in their learning and professional growth. The two-year-long intervention was guided by self-directed learning principles and the researchers, who were also the facilitators, wanted to see teachers being active agents in the planning of the learning activities. Based on this research, there are several design principles that should be kept in mind when planning and implementing teacher professional development programs. The most important one is that self-directed learning should underpin all teacher professional development interventions. Teachers should be involved in deciding upon the content of teacher professional development programs, and they should take ownership of their own learning. Further research included in the book relates to a qualitative study where collaboration as a 21st century skill to enhance self-directed learning while teaching grade 10 chemistry through problem-based learning was explored. The impl implementation of problem-based learning to enhance collaboration skills for the benefit of learners could help promote self-directed learning, which in turn could improve educational results and create better chances for learners to find work. This was a case study of one beginner teacher from a selected high school. The results show that it is possible for teachers without any prior knowledge of problem-based learning to implement it successfully. Furthermore, the results indicate that during problem-based learning implementation, learners rely more on themselves as a group than on the teacher. However, the results also reveal that using such an unusual approach might make teachers uncomfortable. Therefore, it is recommended that intervention programs be presented to enable teachers to improve their skills in implementing problem-based learning in the physical sciences classroom. Another practice-related chapter explored the effects of engaging in the production of multiple solutions to Euclidean geometry problems on students' self-directed learning. The findings show that the intervention did not have a practical significance for students' self-directed learning, but it was able to increase the self-directed learning of students with an initial moderate self-directed learning perception score. This increase in the self-directed learning scores of the students with initially moderate self-directed learning scores after engaging in, in the intervention can be of educational importance in the teaching and learning of mathematics. This means that after the intervention, students with an initial moderate perceived self-directed learning ability were little aware of the factors contributing to the development of self-directed learning qualities and they were in a position to monitor their learning activities. Findings from the interviews indicated that some characteristics of self-directed learning were influenced by the intervention and also individual personal attributes. The overall findings indicate that multiple solution tasks can be a strategy that can be used to advance the self-directed learning of students with an initially moderate self-directed learning ability and also reveal students' competency in geometry problems for those with, with an initially high perceived self-directed learning ability. The concluding chapter provides a unique view of the ethnosemantic structure of folk arithmetic of street vendors as self-directed learners in Lebanon. The ethnosemantic structure of the arithmetic of street vending could highlight questions relating to which mathematical knowledge and competencies are valued, which groups are deemed doers of mathematics, and what purposes mathematics teaching and learning serve within, the, and, within and across cultural contexts. Many of the questions are at the heart of the debate on the role of mathematics in preparing 21st century workforce that is capable of self-directed lifelong learning and that is fully equipped with a new set of foundational knowledge and skills to solve challenging problems. In this context, success in mathematics ensues not just from what one knows, but what one can do with that knowledge in and outside of formal school settings. Thank you, Professor Olifid and Dr. Lobsher. In conclusion, self-directed learning can be considered as a key imperative for education specifically in a very complex, dynamic society. In this context, learning environments and practices of self-directed learning are essential elements 
as, as is shown in this publication. From both the conceptual and empirical work presented in this book, the com complex educational milieu is evident. However, within this complexity, it seems to be possible to foster self-directed learning, enable self-directed learning practice, and through this process, regard its universality while appreciating its transformative relevance in an African context. Thank you.